Okay, Zayat. Zayat, so you were... Okay, Zayat. Yeah. Zayat, so you were... You were about to get into your... Uh, get into your... You're about to begin talking about your, your peace initiative that you have going on. What was that exactly about? What was that exactly about? Okay, so the Arab Peace Initiative was uh, was offered to the Israeli leadership many years ago. At the time, uh, Ariel Sharon was a prime minister. And it discussed all of the, uh, the, the issues uh, that are considered the core of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Uh, more than 50 countries, as I said, more than 50 Muslim countries, including 20 to 26 Arab countries, uh, were a part of this initiative, but unfortunately it was turned uh, down. Uh, I believe as a Palestinian, and, uh, and I think this is actually the, group, the, the, the agenda that the Palestinian leadership is, uh, is offering, uh, that the two-state solution could be the answer to the conflict, as long as we work for it and we fulfill what needs to be fulfilled in order to achieve it uh, very soon, because time is running and we don't have a lot of time uh, that is remaining for us, and sooner or later we'll be meeting a different kind of reality to live in. And this reality will make, uh, will make uh, the Israeli people face a different uh, kind of reality in which they will be facing uh, a different situation. You'll have millions of Palestinians here living on the sand uh, without being given the right to live in a state of their own. And by doing that, uh, the whole uh, nature of the conflict would turn uh, into a conflict for the sake of uh, gaining uh, human rights and equality while living here. So I believe that the state solution could be the answer if we work for it. But I'm not sure that we have a lot of time for that, especially with the current uh, uh, policies made, it, made and created by the current Israeli leadership. And here I would come to the obstacles that I see on the way to, uh, to fulfill that. Today we have about 600,000 settlers living through West Bank, and the number is increasing every day. While the number is increasing, more lands are being used in order to build more, uh, more settlements. And once this is done, uh, this is actually destroying the, the, the option and the solution, uh, and the, the option of the two-state solution. Uh, another thing is, uh, which I see as a policy of administ administrating the conflict rather than finding a solution for it, and unfortunately this is the, the strategy that the current Israeli leadership is following. And this isn't bringing any kind of benefit, neither for the Palestinians nor for the Israelis, but on the contrary is taking us to face different kind of challenges that would be difficult. Right, so Bati, uh, I know you came in a few seconds after right. Zayed began. Bati, uh, I know you came in a few seconds after Zayed began. Began speaking. Um, what 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 are your thoughts on what you know Zayed is saying, and 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 ultimately, um, in regards to a two state solution? I mean, is that something that you are in favor of? And go ahead and respond. Okay, go ahead and respond. I, I just have a different. Um, you know, I all along, uh, I would not establish the state next door to me. Hey, Bati, what I was going to say is... Hey, Bati, what I was going to say is... Your video seems to be lagging, so why don't you click the turn off camera button? And then your audio should stream in a little bit better without the lag. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said, Bati? No, I didn't hear a word. No. I was saying if you if you click the turn off camera button, you click the turn off camera button. That should allow you. You've been lagging a bit, so that should allow your audio to come in a bit cleaner. Okay, can you speak now? Okay, can you speak now? Zaya, do you hear Batsy or no? Zaya, do you hear Batsy or no? No, I can only hear you. Right. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear her now. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, I'll say it again. Um, I cannot deny anybody a right to have their own state. I mean, as a Jew, I think it's very important.
where I'm coming from, as far as the two-state solution is concerned. I cannot have a state next door to me, just as you wouldn't want to have a state next door to you. I can't hear her. She, her voice is cutting. It's cut. It's cutting in and out, right? It's cutting in and out, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I, you, Uh, that's annoying. Uh, that's annoying. <laughs> Let me see here. Also, Let me see here. But Let me turn off my camera. Let me turn off my camera. Bati, you seem to be going in and out, and I mean, I... Bati, you, you seem to be going in and out, and I mean, I... You, maybe it might be your, your internet connection might be a little maybe weaker today. Your, your internet connection might be a little weaker. Yeah, probably, but uh, let me try again. Yeah, I can hear her now. Yeah, yeah I can ahead. hear her now, so you can speak. Bati, are you there? Bati, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me now? I hear you right now. Yes. Can you, you right now. Go yeah. ahead. Okay. okay. Long history of suffering for not having had a place where they could feel safe and comfortable. I would not say that anyone has no right to feel the same, but I will not do it at the expense of my security and my safety. And having neighbors that call in day. I can't hear her, Max. She says, in call in at I just got. Please repeat the last two sentences. I said, heavy next door. To me, calling for the elim elimination of myself and my people. Max? Yeah, yeah she, she keeps cutting in and out, right? She's Zion? cutting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Bati, I don't know. I think it might just be your internet might not be as strong as it usually, typically is, uh, which can be a variety of different reasons. Um, if you want to sit in Bati and, you know, I can just talk with Zayad and if anything comes up that you, you know, would like to ask him about, perhaps that might work a little bit better. Does that sound okay with you? What, would, what is it? I, I was saying that your your voice continues to cut in and out um, pretty frequently. So, so I was going to say, do you want to just sit in and listen and I can speak with Zayed? And if something comes up, you can answer. But now she just left the room. Yet her, 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 typically her internet is better than it's performing right now, Zayed. Yeah. Um, so why don't we just... Make it, a discussion make it a discussion between the two of us and uh, and then you know I'll, I'll kind of we'll just we'll go back and forth and if anyone else joins um, they can continue to they can feel free to chime in does that sound okay with you that sound okay with you yeah sure okay great so overall what you were kind of just saying before is that your your peace initiative uh, revolves around um, you know a two state solution but what what Batsi was kind of just concerned about, what I was getting the sense of, is that she would be very concerned with having a uh, two-state solution with, you know, neighbors who don't really want to have anything to do with Israelis. Uh, can you kind of uh, address that point? Yeah, sure. And uh, I would comment by going back in the, in the past for like seven years. Uh, when the roadmap was uh, applied by the was suggested for both sides following the eruption of the Second Intifada. Uh, and the court had made a paper uh, discussing what kind of steps both sides should do in order uh, to move forward uh, towards a better security and peace. Uh, the Palestinians applied uh, all of the, what was uh, mentioned in this, man, in this plan. Uh, I don't think that uh, security today is an issue uh, that can be used as a claim in order to stay away from uh, finding, a sol finding a solution for the conflict. Uh, on the contrary, uh, I see the issue of security as something or a reason that uh, the Palestinian, uh, the, sorry, the Israeli leadership unfortunately uses, used in order to, to convince the Israeli people and the Israeli public opinion 
that no peace can be achieved and only by improving the deterrence power and having a strong army security can be accomplished. But, you know, the past uh, proved that this cannot be done. And this was the main reason for uh, for signing the Oslo Accord, which uh, which uh, suggested uh, peace and security change to land. But what happened following that is that uh, Israel did not want to compromise uh, or uh, to accept the fact that Palestinians own this land and should live on it. This is one thing. Uh, the other thing, issue is only one out of uh, many points that uh, are involved when we are talking about the solution. Uh, today, uh, the majority of the international community, 138 countries, uh, recognize the right of the Palestinians to live in a state on the, of their own on the 67 borders. Uh, the occupation that is lasting until this moment is considered uh, one of the of the last uh, in history, and uh, and it won't be the right way to to assure security for Israel. But on the contrary, it is definitely a reason for not assuring security. What needs to be done is to, to reach a point where uh, the Israeli audience get, uh, understands that in order to achieve real security here, not the illusion of security, uh, these people who are living here since many years, since tens of years uh, under occupation, must be given the right in a state of their own on their lands. Instead of using their lands for illegal build, building of settlements against the, the basics of the international law, and uh, continuing a uh, colonization uh, on, on Palestinian lands that were recognized by the world as uh, Palestinian lands that must be given back to their uh, people. Right. Ex excuse me, Ziad, this is Batsion again. Um, which, uh, world, which world or which organization in the world recognized that as Palestinian land? Some of it was recognized through a peace agreement or partial peace agreement, or some kind of a negotiation between Israel and the Palestinian Authority. So there is an area that is designated for the Palestinian Authority. But I'd like to know which world or which resolution or which international law recognize that land is strictly land, a country, sovereign country called Palestine. Can you please yes, cite sure. that resolution? Yes. Yes, I, I would like to remind you of the vote that took place uh, uh, a few months ago at the UN, where uh, 138 countries recognized uh, the lands that were occupied at 1967 as Palestinian lands and recognized uh, Palestine as a state on it. Unfortunately, uh, it seems that uh, there is a kind of, uh, of, of a denial of this fact, even though the majority of the international community recognized it. Another thing okay. is that when talking about the... Inter Let me just finish the sentence. Uh, sure, sure, sorry. Uh, international law says clearly that lands that were occupied must not be used to move into a population of the occupier power and must not be used for the benefit of the people of the state that is occupying it. Unfortunately, uh, Israel today is uh, using the West Bank lands and all of the 67 occupied lands to build more settlements and factories that are uh, producing products for the sake of bringing a benefit for the Israel economy. And uh, I can tell you that there is a kind of, uh, of a reaction today taking place at the international community in which more and more people are boycotting these products and considering them illegal products coming from illegal policy that is made by Israel on lands that it does not own. Now, if you want to talk about other kinds of, uh, of ownership, such as promises uh, from God or uh, religious beliefs, then this is definitely a different story. But in reality, uh, uh, you can see clearly that the, the kind of people that are living on this land, their identity, and everything that is related to them is 100% Palestinian. And I, I assure you that this is one of the, of the basic uh, components that are needed in order to recognize a state as a state or not. Okay. Um, okay, may I go on? Yeah, may go ahead. Now? Go, go ahead, Bazi. Okay, sure. Okay. Uh, you let me go point by point to what you raised, okay, Zaid, Ziad, sorry. Yeah. Um, you talked about uh, 
something that happened a few months ago at the United Nations General Assembly. Everybody knows that decisions that take place at the United Nations General Assembly are not really binding as they would be by those taken by the Security Council. You try to do this by going to the Security Council and we remember very well the results of the Security Council's attempt. They were futile. No, futile. Nobody recognized you as a state, which would have been the case for you being a state if the Security Council had voted for it. So just to be accepted as an observer in the United Nations General Assembly is a nice gesture by the world, but it's really not binding. Now, you talk about those lands being occupied since 1967 and their Palestinian lands. I never heard anybody talk about these being Palestinian lands before 1967 when Jordan was there. Jordan was there in those lands. What were they called then? We also consider them an occupying uh, power. And let me assure you that my father so was one of those who were arrested me, for participating in a demonstration against uh, that occupying power. Ex excuse Continue me. Continue so I can comment okay, on your how come, yeah. Then how come the world has only heard of a Palestinian state since 1967? In, in the 70s, you were talking about a Palestinian people, about a Palestinian state. No one has really heard about it before. I grew up in Israel, I was born in Israel, I'm 60 years old, and I've only heard of the Palestinian people since 1967. If you claim that even under Jordanian rule, these were occupying lands, how come you didn't go to the UN then? Why did you only decide to go to the UN when Israel was forced into a war, was forced to go and defend itself, and as a result of that war, which was imposed upon us, we gained certain lands, which some people claim them as liberated, I call them disputed, because as soon as you and I don't agree on the nature of these lands, they become disputed. Do you agree with me that they are disputed? Because you claim they're yours, some people claim they are liberated, I say let's call them disputed. What do you, okay. what do you call these lands? Okay, so let's go to back to the beginning. At 1965, the Palestinian people started a revolution calling for their right in their lands. It wasn't the 67 land, actually. It was the historical land of Palestine, which uh, Jewish people has been brought to it in order to establish a Jewish state on it, according to the principles of the Zionist movement. Uh, we made a compromise because of our true intentions towards our towards peace by recognizing you on 77% of the land and agreeing to live on 23 but unfortunately, and here is the misery that can be found uh, through what I hear as information from you, in which you are still convinced that this, is, this isn't a Palestinian land, it is disputed land. Why did why is just now you started calling for a state of your own, uh, going into the security council details? Let me answer you about First of all, the whole world, including the U.S., that threatened to use their veto at the Security Council, are convinced today that the Palestinians ha have the right to live in a state of, uh, of their own underland. Again, without t giving any kind of importance to what the word says, I am telling you now, and my grand-grandchild would tell you in the future too, that we are a people with an identity, on a, living on a land that is ours, it is ours because of the identity of our grandfathers who lived on it. And it will continue to be ours. Now, you may be convinced that it isn't ours. It's fine. You can live in this reality. You can uh, create another reality. You can be convinced with similar realities that, unfortunately, uh, the Israeli leaders continue to market for the Israeli people. But eventually, the fact and the reality is different. I wonder what would you be suggesting when in 10 years, you will have a million settlers living through the West Bank, and then I won't be calling for the two-state solution. I will be calling for the one-state solution. I will be calling for equality. And you'll have a majority of Palestinians living on this land calling for equality and basic human rights that you can't deny us. It will be a, different, a similar example to the South African conflict, in which you will have a majority living on a land that is ruled by a minority, that would be applying apartheid and racist policies in order to... Max, we're not going to discuss apartheid, Max. ...and it won't represent everyone living there. Max, you told me we're not going to discuss apartheid, didn't you? Why? Right, yeah. No, I'm talking I, to I, Max now. Why yeah. we want to discuss apartheid? 
Right. I, I wanna. I wanna keep, me. I wanna keep the the discussion, you know, focused on solutions and whether or not you know we can go, you know, one state or two state. That that's certainly fine. And just, I mean, towards the end, obviously, um, you know, Zai, what 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 really is, you know, your approach? But, you know, wait, wait, wait. But in order to reach a solution, no, Max, listen. You, if you want to reach a solution. You must discuss the current conditions you're living. Now me, as an East Jerusalemite, own city, on my own land, being denied a nationality. Do you know what does this mean? That I have a travel document, paper given to me by Israel to move around, but I can't have a nationality of my own. No nationality at all. I am being treated according to the Israeli law, but at this time I'm considered a Palestinian. So, I can't get, can't so, get a nationality. So, so what do you call this? You right, want me right. to stay away from my reality and not call it? And by the way, I didn't agree on you that you would define for me expressions of what can be discussed or not before this discussion. So let's make this clear from now. Yeah, I know. I, I know. I sent you. I sent you uh, a message late. I've been. I was. Uh, I just. I was talking to a variety of different people before the discussion. I mean, Batsi, what is what is your take on what Zayed is saying? Where you know, ultimately, uh, a solution. No, I want to address before we get to that. I want to address a few things. Uh, terminology and uh, understanding where I'm coming from. Zaid, did I say this land is not yours? You said who decided that it is yours? And you have no, the seven things I without, said, no, you, without hearing you about please, someone. No. Yeah. Zayed, Zayed, please don't put words in my mouth. I called it disputed territories. Do you understand the meaning of the word disputed? Excuse me. Yeah, I understand and I don't agree with you okay. that they are disputed. Okay, the that is a different between. issue. Excuse me, Zayed. Excuse me, Zayed. I allowed you to speak and I was quiet. Would you kindly yes, allow so. me to do that? Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, of course. Okay, I said disputed. Anytime people have a dispute, what is the first thing people do in a normal society, in a reasonable democratic society, which of course this is what Israel is. What do we do in a democratic society when we have lands dispute? Where do we go? I want to hear you. I want. To, I won't give answers. Continue to the answer. No, I'm. I'm, I'm asking you. No, 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 no. When, when you have a dispute, a land dispute with your neighbor, not with me, in Ramallah or in East Jerusalem, wherever you live, when you have a land dispute, where do you go? Do you take out knives and you start fighting, or do you go to some kind of uh, an authority that can help you resolve the issue? Yeah, we go to court, such as the ICC. That we I go to so court. Fine. To. Yeah. I claim yeah. that this land. I claim that this land, you claim this land is yours. I say this land is disputed because you claim it's yours. The others claim it belongs to Jordan. Others claim it belongs to Israel uh, or to the Jewish people. I say it's disputed. Let's go to the international court. You want to go? Are you ready to go to the international court on that? Absolutely. And let me Wonderful. tell you one thing. Sir, no, I'm not, not done. Okay, I'm not please. done. I'm okay. not done. I'm okay. not done. Okay. 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 Guys, 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 guys. Either the ad we respect each other or we don't. I was very quiet when you spoke. You. Please get, yeah, guys, thank you come very on. much. I'm speaking. Okay. So go ahead and speak, but don't shout and get angry. You can speak. I'm not cutting you. No, I'm not getting angry. I'm trying to overcome your voice because you're not letting me finish my sentences. Let's go to the international court. The international court is based on some kinds of... Uh, um, basic laws that were created by some kind of an organization called the League of Nations. Have you heard of the League of Nations? Yeah. Okay. The League of Nations is the predecessor of what we have today as the United Nations Security Council. There is no doubt that anybody who knows a little bit of political science, anybody who knows a little bit of international law, anybody who knows a little bit of history will deny it. We know that the United Nations Security Council is the, uh, the uh, body that inherited all the laws and all the decisions and all the resolutions of the League of Nations. Now, I just told you earlier that the, League of Na that the Security Council resolutions are the ones that are binding, unlike those of the UN. Now, the League of Nations, which created all these laws and set all the groundwork to the laws that we have today as international laws, voted in July of 1922 on the mandate over Palestine, which I also call Eretz Israel, 
because these are the two names of this land. You prefer to call it Palestine, which is an artificial, arbitrary name given to an original name that was Eretz Israel. You can call it Palestine. I'll call it Eretz Israel. Can we agree on that? You can call it whatever you want to call it. Um, exactly. Fine. Decision. So uh, I just want you to understand that when I refer to this as Eretz Israel, I mean exactly the same thing that you mean when you talk about Palestine, okay? It's exactly the same area, and it is an area, because Eretz Israel yeah. has never been a sovereign state, neither was Palestine. Right. And when the mandate was uh, enforced on this area by the resolution uh, of the League of Nations, which was binding, they decided that this whole area, including Transjordan, is going to be the national home for the Jewish people. Not my decision, not that of the Zionist people. You talk about the Zionist people decided to come here and establish a state. As right. if we woke up one day and we said, come on, the Zionist movement, let's go and build a, a nation on a foreign land. It was actually given to us by the nations of the world, by those that represented the world in those days. But, but and on, based on that decision, we came here. Okay. Go go ahead, Zayed, and yeah, let's let's keep it, you know, back and forth versus both of you speaking at once. Go ahead, Zayed, speak for a little bit and respond. Listen, uh, I don't want to go into discussions about uh, what you seem to be trying to convince yourself with, because again, I'm telling you, the reality that we're living today is completely different. You can take it or leave it. I don't want you, I don't, I, I'm not, you know, trying to pressure you to believe in that or not. I'm telling you, the next step that we are taking now, because of the refusal of the current Israeli government to move forward when talking about the, the peace process, is to continue in the process of joining us in more international organizations on the basis of the, on the last uh, uh, decision that was made by the UN General Assembly. And one of these international organizations is the ICC, the court, the International Court. Uh, and you, just a matter of time until you see how this court will be dealing with the, with, the, with the illegal actions that are made by Israel. A former example is the building of the racist separation wall. And there was a decision about that in Lahai. We will continue in this process. But I, I'm, unfortunately, I can't hear what kind of, of a solution you're, uh, you're, you're suggesting. Since the beginning of your talking, you're only saying that this land has been considered as us by this and that. We, we, uh, what did you do in order to achieve your rights? You, uh, what do you expect of people living under occupation to do? Do you think we'll be sitting and do nothing? And just wait till Israel reaches the maturity of understanding that there is a, a world people living under occupation. No, this won't happen. On the contrary, we will continue our activism. And uh, we will continue uh, 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 resisting the, the, the current Israeli policies, which include, as I said before, very racist laws that, are, uh, that include administration, impris imprisonment, uh, refusal of giving the right of, those, of vote for Palestinians in certain areas, controlling other areas by military force and authority, and com uh, doing a lot of things that are against all the kinds of democratic norms that you would talk about when you're talking about a democratic state. This is uh, this is what we're living in. I'm I'm, I'm as Palestinian, and I can assure you the majority of the Palestinians would not accept this reality. We tried uh, when we agreed to sign the Oslo Accord. Uh, to agree to, to go for, move forward in this peace process, but unfortunately we realized after 20 years that Israel is still not ready for such a kind of compromise. And therefore we're changing strategies. We're going, we, we, were, we aren't uh, holding knives and uh, running after uh, Israelis. We went to the international community. We had a, a very satisfactory response at the General Assembly, which, uh, which made us understand uh, that, uh, again, 100 where 38 countries are pro-Palestinian state, were only 16 in the Security Council. We would not, we may have not a majority in that, but I am uh, sure and convinced that that we will get a majority sooner or later. Now, what comes beside the, the, our efforts on the international level it comes the, the the peaceful people, uh, popular uh, resistance here on the ground. And this is something that is increasing every day, and it will continue to increase. This may be something that would convince. Uh, more Israelis and, uh, and uh, more of those of the of those countries uh, on the international level 
that it is the time, the time to end this misery and to end this uh, tragedy that resulted in, in turning millions of Palestinians into refugees and preventing other millions from living in sovereignty and in a state of their own. Okay. The only reason I brought in international law is because you are the first one to mention it. And I thought, if you talk about what's good for the goose, is good for the gander. If you can talk about international law, I can talk about international law as well. And if you prefer to just talk about, without, about issues that concern a whole nation, and you want to talk about emotions, you work from an emotional point of view, which is very powerful, I must admit. Emotions work. Right now, the world feels that you are the underdog, and the world will support you, okay? But if you want to talk about a dispute, which you said we can go to the court if there is a dispute about land. Right now, there is a dispute about land, and no one can deny that it is a disputed land. No one. Whether it was conquered, whether it was liberated, whether it was given by the international community or not, whether whichever way you look at it, it's disputed. And I read comments of people and they say land that is conquered in war, that is gained through conquest in war, is not considered, um, does not belong to the people who conquer it. Whoever wrote that, I think it's Jennifer, hi Jennifer, who wrote this. Jennifer, if this is what you think, then you're going to have to go and rewrite history <laughs> because the way the world looks now, the map of the world, <laughs> the way we look at it now, is so much as a result of conquest, failure, defeat, and war. So, right, so uh, I'm not saying it should be the way that um, you know borders are determined. I want to do it in a peaceful way. I want to go to some kind of an um, unbiased organization, if I can call the International Court in The Hague, and go and have them decide. And I tell you, based on legal grounds, and based on what I know and what I read and what I studied and what I can quote and what I've lectured about, the League of Nations, which is still binding, the decisions by the League of Nations, which are still binding, give us that land. I'm not saying we cannot change uh, resolutions of law through negotiations. I've never said that. I'll be the last one to say it. You, there are certain areas in, in uh, Judea and Samaria that you can have. I don't want it. But... Don't ask me to give up um, uh, East Jerusalem. Never. I will never agree to that. Jerusalem is united. It is one city. I don't want that. So, I'm willing to sit and negotiate. Um, in the Came David Accord, you were given 97% of what you wanted. And you still did not agree to take it. And when I spoke to somebody who is really close to Arafat, he said if Arafat had come back, with a, a, a signed agreement on the Camp David Accord, he would have been shot. Because according to whatever it is that you people believe in, whether it's Islam or your other ideologies, any piece of land that any Muslim ever walked on is considered holy land, and you're not supposed to give it up. So if we're dealing here with a religious ideology, I'm very sorry, we cannot build. You told me earlier whether you believe this land was given to you by God. No, I'm a religious Jew, not in the traditional sense of the word. I'm not a, a, a halachic Jew in the way I follow the law. But I never use a religious argument to support my political stance. Never. I think we have enough support from international law, from history. You talk about your grandfather living but, in this land. I can talk about my great, 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 great grandparents. Batty who lived in this land. So if your grandparents have a right to be here because they lived, you have a right to be here because of your great-great-grandparents, I have a right to be here because of my great-great-great-great-great-parents. Who are you to decide what generation ba Basi. stops your right to live here? But I'm not even using that argument. Let's go only by something more objective, the international law. Yes, we can use emotional arguments and we can really play the, uh, on the emotions of the world. But eventually, we have to feed our people bread, and you cannot live on that brownie points of emotion for okay. very long. Zai, Zai, go ahead and respond, and then you know I'm gonna. I have. I want to go ahead and respond, and I want to ask Batsy a specific question that will lead directly into solutions. Okay. 
Um, I, I don't think I can reach a solution with someone who believes that Jerusalem is united and lives this illusion dream until this moment. Uh, uh, we are not talking about religious beliefs. If we were talking about religious beliefs that she mentioned, we would not be offering uh, the two-state solution and uh, recognizing Israel on the, uh, and the Palestinian state on the 67 borders. But I still commit to this principle because of uh, our true intentions as people to reach uh, peace. While unfortunately, the majority today in the Israeli society, like that, uh, believes also believe that Jerusalem must stay united and they are not uh, ready to, to compromise any land uh, for, uh, because of security issues. But as I said before, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to talk uh, I, I won't live the illusions that others lived until today because I invite anyone to come and visit East Jerusalem to see if it is Palestinian by its, uh, its nature or is it uh, a part of the United Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And definitely, if you come here, you'll see that uh, the majority, uh, not actually the majority, the 99% uh, of the people living in East Jerusalem are Palestinian, except for the settlers that uh, uh, that are funded by extreme organizations to come and settle here within Palestinian neighborhoods. And uh, this is a fact that will become wider uh, day by day. And uh, nothing can change that. Neither uh, uh, a belief uh, that there is something else while on the ground it is uh, different, uh, nor any, any kind of other uh, saying. Uh, uh, as for uh, international uh, law, international law states clearly, and as I said, and this is not something that I am saying. Even the majority of the Israeli leaders are saying that, who, who were opposing uh, the current government. They're saying we're losing the international community. And most of the, the words say enough is enough. The European Union is saying we need a solution in the next three years or, you, or we'll be taking other kinds of steps with the, with the Israeli leadership. Uh, and uh, this is what, uh, what the Israel would be facing. Uh, we're talking about the Muslim beliefs and the Waqf claim. As I said in the beginning, more than 50 Muslim countries made the Arab Peace Initiative. I suggest that uh, it is worth reading. It includes the uh, answers for all of the core cases, and this is the only solution I can give. But if, I, if you want me to offer solutions for someone who considers uh, my, uh, my city uh, a part of uh, his or her united capital, and denies my presence in it, and uh, wants to continue to live an illusion that states something else, then I don't think that we can read any kind of solution with. I think the minimum that we can accept as a solution is the 67 borders, including East Jerusalem. That was recognized as a part of the Palestinian state by more than 138 countries. And I hope, and I wish, and I know that by our diplomatic efforts, sooner or later, more Israelis will be convinced that this is the reality that they are facing here, and this is what the world also considers when talking about the Palestinian rights. Uh, I'm not. I, I. I never started a discussion about emotions. If I want to talk about emotions, then I will tell you about uh, Der Yassin Masak, uh, the thousand refugees who were uh, who were uh, attacked by gangs of those who believe that they can kick them out of the of this uh, land to be to, to, to be sent and shipped to live in refugee camps in Lebanon and Jordan and they're living like animals until this moment there so you would live in your fancy houses I didn't want to say that I didn't want to go into this discussion I didn't want to invite you to, to living in today so you can have your own between quotations uh, democratic state I don't want to go into this I don't want to talk emotions as uh, as you were uh, suggesting but uh, this is also another reality that thousands and millions are living outside so you would live in a state of your own uh, look at the region look at the solutions that your leadership is offering you building a wall that is separating israel from all of the region uh, being separated and uh, the, and uh, becoming a part that has no, no realistic or natural uh, relation with any of the countries around it refusing uh, year by year uh, many solutions and offers were given uh, in order to reach a solution, it isn't giving any. It isn't bringing any kind of benefit. Uh, the whole Middle East is witnessing a change. Right. Uh, I think that uh, what we're doing uh, now is the last uh, protection that we're trying to give for the two-state solution, and uh, I don't think this is something that will last forever and would be an option. 
and then you will be facing the questions that will be raising for you to answer when you won't have this option anymore. Right. And, and Bati, okay. can I just can uh, what I, is Bati, can I just ask you yeah. one quick thing? Um, yeah. <coughs> you know, so Zayed brings up some points uh, about you know, 1967 borders being the minimal uh, amount that could be accepted. Um, he talks about, you know, being, you know, not being able to, you know, there, there's there's a wall that, you know, was built and yet might be protecting Israelis, but is it doing much for fostering a solution um, or, you know, restricting, let's say, travel uh, for him or, let's say, friends of his in the West Bank um, and not allowing free travel, doing much towards solutions? What is your response to you know a palestinian citizen probably not located too far away from where you live like what is your response to him in terms of trying to come up with a solution but yet having you know uh those things in place right now okay well i suggested we go to the international court uh i think it's the most objective one and through that we start a dialogue um i believe in dialogue i uh but I also believe in securing my nation and my people. And uh, I believe that good fences make good neighbors. Uh, Israel is not the first one to erect a wall or a fence to secure itself. You see it along the Mexican-American border. Uh, the ancient China wall was built already then. The smart Chinese, the, probably the leaders of the future world, the future leaders of the world, have erected a wall. They decided that it was the best way to protect themselves. So Israel is not the only one that erects a wall. Let's not make it, let's not single Israel out, because there are other examples. I just received uh, an email today showing many walls around the world erected for the same reason. Um, as far as having a state close by, no, I'm, uh, you know, I don't trust, I'm sorry, I don't trust people who still have in their charter the, ero the you know, the uh, objective of erasing the Jewish right. state. Right. I'm not going to trust people who call me cancer. I'm not going to trust people whose ideology calls me a pig or a monkey. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to, you wouldn't either, right. Max. Right, and, and Zai, what you... would do either. Zai, what, what's your response to, you know, Bati and her concern over that? That, you know, yeah, yeah, you know. A wall, a wall that is built on your uh, territory is considered legitimate, but when it is a wall that is built on the lands of others, taking farms uh, away and separating houses from the middle and preventing uh, uh, simple innocent peasants from reaching their lands to, to, to make their farming and earn their living is definitely illegal and is built on racist uh, facts. As for the the shelters and the go, go. yeah sure I can uh, you see I can accept you and let you talk I can hear your comment before continuing I can I can I can I can continue go ahead say what you have to say no no I'm sorry I didn't I, I you came across as cut so I thought you finished saying what you had to say go ahead finish I'm sorry I didn't realize you were in the middle of a sentence sorry. Okay, so this is regarding the war. Now, regarding the shelters, trust me, there are uh, worse uh, shelters within the uh, with the Jewish movement. Uh, there is Ovadia Yosef who, who described Palestinians as people who can all be, be only be servants uh, for uh, for the Jewish people, and uh, they should not be given a state of their own. This actually reminds me of the fifties uh, back uh, at as when uh, black people were considered also uh, only for the sake of being slaves or being servants right. for the white population. As for the other, or other extreme shelters, you have uh, parties and movements that are uh, participate legally in the Knesset uh, elections, and they believe in the fact of the importance of transferring every single Arab that is living in the in the on, on what you call Eretz Israel. Uh, they believe that these Palestinians should be transferred to Jordan, and uh, so they would. Hold their uh, country there and they should not be given the right to live on this land so come on would all, not also accept such uh, right such, so, uh, so, so, so for a majority so, so as that, a partner for, for a solution so so here here's here's one thing that I want to throw out there is it safe to say and I guess you guys can give me a yes or no answer if it's possible I think it is possible um, is it safe to say that uh, right now the current authorities governmental authorities on the Israeli front and the Palestinian front are really not the proper individuals and parties 
um, to, to come and sit at a table and actually put together a real solution uh, for this conflict, whether or not it's a, because it's not going to be fixed overnight. So is it safe to say that the both governmental authorities don't, um, you know, aren't in the proper position and aren't looking for peace amongst one another? Cause, and go ahead, Batsy. Okay, first I want to refer back to something that Ziad said earlier. He mentioned uh, Rabbi Ovadia, and he mentioned some parties in the Israeli Knesset. Uh, well, Rabbi Ovadia doesn't represent me, certainly doesn't represent me, and uh, he doesn't represent uh, most Israelis. Uh, those parties that you talk about, the extreme one, they're talking about transfers, they're a minority. Uh, I'm talking a government that runs Gaza. Hamas is not just a small party. Hamas is the government of Gaza. Hamas refuses to recognize Israel. They're the ones we're going to have to sit at the table with. You're not going to have to sit with Rabbi Ovadia. You're not going to have to sit with those small parties that you uh, want to transfer. You're going to sit with the majority of the parties. I just heard Tsipi Livni today on television. She just signed a coalition agreement with Bibi. She is very much in favor of the two-state solution. Bibi is very much in favor of the two-state solution. So we are far ahead of your government in Gaza that doesn't even recognize Israel and wouldn't even utter the word two-state solution. So let's make that clear before everybody goes and calls us racists or anything else. Uh, nobody in the Israeli government currently, the prime minister himself said a two-state solution. Whether I agree with him or not is a different issue, but he is the president of my country, or the, uh, the prime minister of my country, and I'll go along with whatever they say. Um, but, but to go back to the, um, to the question that uh, you asked, um, I'm still very much in favor of con considering these territories disputed territories, reaching an agreement, having peace, for peace, but do you, peace but for do you, land, do you think the, for the sake of Bati, peace. you think that, but do you think that, you know, ultimately, do you think the actions on behalf of, let's say, you know, Netanyahu really, truly demonstrate that? I mean, you know, do you really think that they are the proper people in place to, to put forth a solution? And then I asked this... I just told you. I just told you that he brought in Tsipi Livni, and Tsipi Livni is very much a dove. Tsipi Livni wants to um, uh, bring forth back on the table the negotiations with our neighbors. So, I mean, I just saw an interview with her. Okay. And, you know, I, 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 wouldn't, I would have never voted for her, but she's a very wise woman. She sat there and she made a lot of sense. But I was only bringing it as an example to show that the examples that Ziad brought are very extreme and they're not relevant for the point of discussion right now. Whereas the example that I give of Hamas government that we're going to have to sit at the table with is a government. It's not just a small fraction of a party that sits in the parliament. It's a government that heads a state and they refuse to recognize my existence. So we're not talking, uh, okay. we're talking apples and oranges. No, 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 not uh, on the contrary. Uh, Bennett, uh, who just uh, won, like, I, I'm not sure if it is 12 or 14 uh, chairs at the Knesset, also said that the West Bank must uh, stay as a part of the United Arab Israel, Israel and refuse the right of the Palestinians on it. And this is actually as extreme as what you mentioned. Uh, Figlin, who is a part of uh, Netanyahu's party that you're uh, describing as a, a peace seeker party, said that Palestinians should be paid money to encourage them to leave their houses because this is Eretz Israel that should not. Palestinians, and this isn't a minority. You're talking here about the majority. Uh, and exactly as you see this, uh, the charter you mentioned as an extreme charter. I also see uh, see the opinion of denying the Palestinian right in in East Jerusalem or in living in a state of, of their own on the principles of uh, 1967 borders, as as that you're describing when talking about the charter, without uh, recognizing the Palestinian right on uh, uh, and, uh, on land on the. 67 borders for me it's uh, it's a waste of time um, i can assure you from now till one more hundred uh, one years uh, would uh, would pass no palestinian would uh, be ready to to compromise his or her right in east jerusalem or the 67 borders so you can uh, enjoy the united uh, capital of jerusalem now uh, backing back uh, to your question uh, I, i'm i'm so sorry i can't max uh, reply by saying uh, no 
because uh, in, in my eyes, to my opinion, uh, the the, uh, the 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 peer leadership. Uh, uh, and if I, uh, and you can go back to the sources and check, uh, applied all, all of what asked from uh, from it in the roadmap and the quoted demands list. We went according to the plan that was asked for us. We were the first people under occupation to assure security for the occupying power. This never happened in history, by the way. We made history by accepting that uh, according to the quoted list, in which we, the, the people under occupation, make, made sure that we would assure the security of Israel, which is the occupying power that is occupying us. Uh, unfortunately, even though we apply, we replied to all of the demands that were required from us, we found ourselves living with uh, with extreme leaders uh, such as Netanyahu, who actually comes from the, the right. There isn't anything to, to explain or try to try to convince with. Netanyahu is known with the Likud as a, a rightist uh, party that joins uh, coalitions with people like Lieberman, who made trouble for Israel in the last four years. And uh, these guys aren't interested in that. Actually, uh, clearly, uh, uh, Lieberman said a few days ago by a statement he made to the media, we should all, he said like this, we said we should only administrate the conflict with the Palestinians, but we must never reach a solution with them. This by itself means a lot and explains what kind of position or paper the, that Netanyahu would be bringing, especially that Lieberman is his number one partner now. Uh, with his uh, with his party, Livni is the only uh, uh, tool that uh, Netanyahu is using uh, cleverly. Actually, when talking about politics, uh, Netanyahu this time is clever. Uh, he's trying to bring in faces in order to convince the international community that here you go. I'm 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 interested in the two-state solution, but what kind of two states? All no one knows. We, uh, we are requested to negotiate uh, that for another 20 years uh, to discuss details from the beginning as if we never discussed it with any Israeli before and let it move with time as if we, we you know, you, you can simply live under occupation with no care for time. You can spend uh, time only for listening from, from a suggestion from here or, uh, or there. Right, so, so wait, uh, Bati, you can... No, no, Max, I still, you still... Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I want you to respond, but then I want, I want you to respond... And then I want to ask you each what I believe is kind of a difficult question, and I really want to get your answer to it. So go ahead and respond, and then I want to ask you both a, okay. a question. Okay, first of all, I'm really saddened to see or to hear Ziad comparing a call to eliminate a people, to, to kill a people, to throw people into the sea. He equates it with uh, keeping a city united. He said it's the same, my call to keep Jerusalem united is akin to the Hamas call to throw me into the sea. I'm really saddened to see that, uh, that really he has a serious issue with reading comprehension here or understanding comprehension because I really think it's apples and oranges, but that's okay. I'll respect your opinion. Uh, you asked us earlier about uh, going back to the 67 borders. Max, I grew up in the 67 borders. My hometown, was five kilometers from uh, Jordan. And I can tell you that when I was five years old, and we're not talking emotions because, you know, we mentioned Dear Yassin, by the way, we talked about the discrimination, we tried to uh, touch on the issue of apartheid. Let me give you just a little bit of an emotional mm -hmm. moment of me, a child mm -hmm. growing up. Uh, when I was five years old, my parents try to uh, make a living in Israel and they raised, uh, they had a few sheep and they had a few cows and I remember one day when in those days the terrorists were called Fedayin, they used to cross the border and just slaughter. I remember as a child waking up one morning and seeing a few of our cows slaughtered. It was not, not a nice sight. So to ask me who's lived under the 67 borders to agree to those borders and allow the Qassam rockets to, or, or any airplane that lands in uh, Ben Gurion Airport to be in the range of the Qassam rocket is asking me to commit suicide. Would you want to commit suicide, Max? I doubt it. Don't ask me to do that, please. Right, right. So, so here, here's what okay. I, 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 I just I, give me two minutes, please. Go, go ahead, go ahead, Zai. Go ahead, Zai. Okay, listen, my dear. You saw the cows being slaughtered. Uh, let me tell you, uh, 
what kind of challenges I had to face before believing in this two-state solution, but it still convinced me. My father was in prison for 10 years. We were expected to join five years. I lost one of my cousins who was killed uh, for participating in a demonstration, simply for participating in a demonstration in the second intifada. I lost, uh, I was, me myself was in prison actually for three months because I participated in a demonstration against the wall. I, I, I tasted the taste of staying between four walls uh, in a prison. I saw people being killed from my family, and I had my father who still has nightmares because of the torture he went through in prisons only for being a political activist. But despite all of that, I was raised on the principle of accepting the other and accepting the two-state solution. I grew up understanding that compromising for the sake of peace is important to ensure a better future. But what I can hear from you is only your, your uh, continuous uh, denial of my right in my own city, your continuous uh, belief, which I respect. See, I respect it, even though it means uh, the destruction of my future. But I hope that you would be more enlightened and, uh, and exposure to the, to, the, to, the, to the reality that we're living here. I, I, uh, I wanted to, to just explain for you in a few words, what does it mean to keep East Jerusalem as a part of United Jerusalem? It means that keeping 250,000 Palestinians under occupation. Do you know what does it mean under occupation? It means that it, there is no law that protects me. It means that if I go for political activism, if I demonstrate and express myself, I am allowed to be put in prison for six months uh, only because I did that. It means that I can't trust myself. It means that I can't uh, vote. It means that I can't uh, reach my society in the villages which are only five kilometers away from me. It means I have no freedom of uh, movement. It means that uh, my health insurance depends uh, on the fact whether I'm living according to the uh, Jerusalem uh, municip municipality borders or not. It means to threaten that my rights can be taken from me if I try in any way to, to live my own Palestinian identity. This is what it means, and that's why I made it, make it equal to, 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 to the belief of throwing uh, people into sea, as, uh, as you mentioned it, because it is as bad as that. It turns my life into hell, and it prevents me from living, from living normally as you live in a state of your own. That's it. I see that you went to the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. How hellish could that be? Yeah. Oh, trust me, I suffered a lot there. Oh, I suffered. I suffered because... Uh, uh, no, but I was denied the right of expressing myself at the Hebrew University. No, 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 you didn't get the right. I paid for that, exactly as anyone who comes to, to study at the university. But when it, came to, when it came to the point in which I was calling, I was calling for my right to express myself. Do you know what kind of answer I was given? The Chinese foreign students were given a week to live their own, uh, to, to live uh, the culture. The Americans were given a week to, to hold activities for American culture. But when I came and talked about Palestinian heritage, you know what they told me? You want to talk about Palestinian heritage? Go to the street and do it. That the Israeli police with you. This is not a place to develop that, even though, unfortunately, universities are known as a place to develop political uh, thought and democratic uh, norms. Uh, trust me, there are lecturers at the Hebrew University which were judged by the by the students for saying uh, things similar to what I am saying here today. They were uh, they were uh, considered as traitors who are pro uh, extremely pro Palestine and uh, and against uh, their national. These are people who can accept as partners uh, for uh, in order to reach a fair solution. These are people who came into East Jerusalem and saw the re the reality that we live day by day in Silwan and Isawiya, in which we tend uh, they are turned into ghettos that are under 24 hours attack by Israeli police. That is simply signifying oppression and occupation in my eyes. Bati, what's what's your um, response to that? I... Bati, what's your response to you know the, the specific thing that he highlighted? You know, trying to express himself. Yeah, I'm... Yeah. I'm not joined, I'm not overhearing, I'm not justifying anything that is done to him or to his father or to his members. I have never said that I'm in favor of torturing or uh, I've never, believe me, Ziad, if there's anybody you want to sit at the negotiating table, it would be me. I believe in your right to self-determination, I believe in your right, but as I said, I believe in my right to survive to live in security and safety. And my charity begins at home. Before I can worry about you people, I have to worry about the safety and the security of my people, just as you're doing to yours. It's only logical. They're in a state of war. Show me one war that is just. 
show me one war that does not claim its victims. I'm not justifying it. I'm not saying it's the way it should be. I'd like a solution. You think I don't want my grandchildren to grow up in a country without any fear of war? That not, you know, I tell my friends that I'm going to Jerusalem by bus, that they're telling me, be careful that you're not being bombed. I'm not worried about that. But some people are worried about that. And it's a reality that not only you face, but we face it as well. Don't think that it's only one side. There are victims right. on our side as well. Unfortunately, the world doesn't recognize it. And I don't think you recognize it either, which is more unfortunate. Because if you talk so much about your victimhood, you have to understand as much as you fight peacefully, there are some factions in your society that would be more than happy to see my blood spilt in a split second. Okay? So let's not pretend that you are the angels and we're the villains. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I think I. But, no, 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 yeah. I'm not saying we're angels. But, 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 please, I want to explain for you something regarding security. Uh, my dear, today at Gaza, you have complete security. It is assured for you by the Egyptians and Hamas, who I, I don't agree with. But let me, let me talk politics. Hamas and Egypt assured you complete security in Gaza. Abbas and his forces, which were trained by Dayton, assured you complete security in the West Bank. What kind of a different security you want so you can make sure that you can reach a solution? You don't understand what happens here. You have 4,000 Palestinian soldiers in the West Bank who are working day and night for, to assure Israel's security and are criticized 24 hours by the Palestinian people for doing that in exchange for nothing. We're giving, you're being given security for exchange. For, no, uh, for nothing. And I'm not talking about being victimized. I'm, I'm, I'm just explaining to you, trust me, I'm just explaining to you what kind of a daily life you have to go through here. And despite all of that, I'm not saying that uh, th this is a reason that it's preventing me. No, I, I tell you, because I have, wait, uh, because I have beliefs and norms in the importance of dem democracy, in the importance of, the, of reaching peace, accept you. I accept you, but I, I'm not ready to compromise my right in the minimum that, that, that I'm accepting for myself, which is a state on the 67 borders, which is only the 23% of the world land. But on the, at the same time, when you come and tell me that I don't recognize your right in East Jerusalem, I'm not going to talk about the 67 borders because this is a suicide for me because of security, which is something, which is an expression that unfortunately the Israeli leaders succeeded to convince you and many other Israelis with it uh, as a claim for staying away from peace. I can't find an answer for that except for one thing. You're only one step away from, from understanding the whole equation. I, I talked in front of many Israelis who were actually much more, uh, which had uh, much more extreme opinions. But with time, they sat with themselves and they tried to understand what does it mean to have security. Is security only obtained with a, with a strong army and launching a war here and there every once in a while to prove to the Middle East that we are the strong guys? No. They saw the change that is taking place in Cairo and in Tunisia and uh, now in Syria and in other areas. And they understood that the, the whole security equation that uh, was worked upon for the last 20 years has changed now. And without reaching a peace with the Palestinians and giving them their right, they won't get real security. And that's why... All, not because they, are, they, they don't want the, the, the best benefit for Israel, but on the contrary, because they want real security for Israel, they are convinced that it is the time to put an end for this occupation. There is a new, there is a movie that was uh, uh, that is a candidate for uh, for Oscar that has been being uh, showed at the U.S. that included interviews with the, with six former uh, Mossad or Mossad or Shabak leaders. The six leaders said. It is the time for Israel to end this occupation because it is bringing damage to our security more than it is bringing real security to our people. If your own security guys are saying that, there is nothing to add. It, you, may be, you may be more convinced if you hear them rather than hearing that from a Palestinian. Uh, this is what I can think of. Batsi, do you know what, what movie he's referring to and what are your thoughts on that direct yes, point? I have not seen the movie. It's going to be shown on Israeli television on Thursday, so I'll only be seeing it then. I have not seen that movie. Okay, uh, so so here here's what I wanted to do, guys. Um, you know, we've been speaking for, uh, for a little over an hour right now, and I'm really happy to say that, um, you know, it, it, I think we've moved uh, into a... Uh, a more productive place in a discussion, and in about 15 minutes, I have to um, go and start another room uh, regarding actually 
this Palestinian hunger strike that's been going on. So that's taking place shortly. So what I want to do is I wanted to ask you each a question um, and get your answers to it. And then if you guys would like to continue speaking, by all means, you can continue. There's a bunch of people listening in, which is great. And, I'm th and they're submitting a ton of comments, so they might be interested in listening to you guys continue. But here's my question. Um, it's, first, it's a yes or no question, and then, and, and, then uh, and I'll ask it to each of you, and then I'm going to have a follow-up question. So, Batsy, do you think that the current Israeli government uh, is perfect? Yes or no? No. Okay, and Zaya, do you think that the current uh, Palestinian authorities, um, PLO, Hamas, uh, Fatah are, are perfect. I can't answer such a question. This in this question. Is it is, is with it, different it, ideologies, with different programs, with with a, with a complete difference between right and left? Right. This is really hard. Ziad, Ziad, how can you? I mean, it has to include everything because in Judea and Samaria, have uh, the Palestinian Authority run by. Uh, Abbas by Fatah, and in the in Gaza we have it by Hamas, so he has to include everybody. No, no, no. Okay, let me correct uh, your information. Firstly, the last uh, agreement meeting that was held between Fatah and Hamas uh, stated clearly that the PLO, which is run today by Fatah, is uh, is uh, is authorized to hold any kind of negotiations with Israel, and uh, is, uh, now preparing. So it isn't anymore, as you're saying, as to authorities. Unfortunately, it was before, I agree with you, but today it is a different story. But regarding your question, Max, I'm so sorry, I can't uh, give you an answer for that, but what I can tell you in one statement is that, in my eyes, uh, an authority that believes in the two-state solution, and it believes in the principle of uh, exchanging peace with lands, is a government that represents me and takes me on the right way to find a solution for this conflict. Okay, so, so, so here... Just, I just want to make just one comment, please, Mark, to Norman. He says that apparently... If just uh, Norman says that I am allowed to speak only because I'm living in Israel. I just want to make it clear for him that it isn't as free as he exp uh, uh, expressed it. Uh, I was in jail for three months for participating in a peaceful demonstration in East Jerusalem against the war. That's it. Okay, so, 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 so here's, what I, here's what I basically just want to ask. And... I guess I'll ask it to you first, Zayed, because I'm curious to hear your answer based, you know, on the fact that I didn't get a yes or no out of you. I'll have to try again next time you appear on Vonvo. Um, but what I was going to say is, uh, so yeah. <laughs> what, what, what do you think are the immediate next steps that need to take place uh, from your different governmental authorities uh, you know, what, what are the immediate next steps that need to be taken on their behalf um, in order to foster a peace deal? Well, our strategy is clear. We said that if the principle of accepting a Palestinian state on the 67 borders is accepted, then we, we would go back into negotiations and move forward. If not, then the strategy of the majority of the people is to continue in the campaign for a peaceful popular resistance, that would bring uh, results that we desire in order to reach our freedom and liberty. Right, and, but, and so, so let's say they, they accept the 67 borders. What is an immediate, specific next step that, you know, needs to be taken? Because are you saying that once a six, if there were 67 borders tomorrow, like, you know, things would be all good? Or what is an immediate next step that needs to happen on your government's end to, uh, you know, to, to, to foster a real peace solution? I think I, I just made it clear. If the, if, if the 67 uh, borders principle is accepted, then the next thing would be sitting with the third party to negotiate to the final uh, core issues. Okay, great. And so and now, Batsy, my, my question to you is same thing. What, you know, you said you, you don't believe your government is perfect. So what immediate next steps do you think your government needs to be doing, needs to stop doing, whatever it is, uh, in order to, you know, uh, foster a real uh, peace solution. Uh, insist upon going to the international court. Insist upon going to the international court to solve this entire issue? Yeah. You, you think I, mean, I mean, the Palestinians have talked about international laws, international court, they're going to seek international recognition. I'm saying 
it's a most logical thing. You want international recognition. You want it legally. You want it. Uh, you want to have legitimacy. Do it through the court system. Everybody knows that court systems are enforceable. And I think Israel should accept that. And I think the Palestinians accept it. And they should go there. That's my idea. And whatever, whatever agreement is going to be accepted by the international court, that's the one that should uh, be enforced upon. That's all. Okay, great. Um, so, so here's what I was going to say uh, to both of you. Thank you so much. I just want to add, excuse yeah. me, just yeah. a second, Max. Yeah, go ahead. I think the word international was repeated by Ziad more than it was repeated by anybody else I've heard before. He was talking about international community, international community, the EU, other parts of the international community. Okay, international community, then let's go all the way on the international aspect of what he's claiming. That's all. It's only a logical conclusion of what he's been asking. Right. Okay, great. Um, so, so I have no problem with that, even with the international court. Okay, well, so I have some documents that were given by the international court system, and I don't think the international court system is going to reverse <coughs> itself uh, or, or deny anything that was accepted by its predecessor. Oh, no, I know. But what can be done... Okay, let yeah, me just yeah. say something, Zia, just a second. Uh, but yeah, what yeah, can yeah. 